Let's get more, shall we, on the sad news that John Motson has passed away at the age of 77. We can speak to Sky Sports football commentator Martin Tyler right now. Martin, um, thank you so much for, for joining us on, on what must be a, a hugely emotional day for you today to hear that news. Um, what are your thoughts at this moment? Well, I was very shocked to hear the news, Rob, to be honest with you. I, I didn't know um, that, that John was, um, had been ill. I'm finding out now that he had been ill a little bit um, over the past year or so. Um, I hadn't seen him so much since he disappeared from the gantry, but I saw, I don't know, 45 years of him on the gantry. And he was, um, well, first of all, he was somebody I admired in terms of the profession enormously. His preparation was second to none, his attention to detail, um, his wish to know everything possible about the, um, the, uh, the game that he was about to broadcast, and, and he was a, a real example to me for that. He actually, before my very first television game back in 1974, he sent me a telegram. Yes, a telegram. I'm sure many of the listeners won't even know what that is. Um, but he, um, it said, talk little, but say a lot. And I think that summed up John, really. Um, he was economical with his words, but he punched them out. And when, um, when he spoke, uh, it had great resonance. Uh, a wonderful career. Um, a funny guy away from the microphone, probably a bit quirky as a person, but he had a, a great sense of humor. And, and he helped a lot of people as well. He certainly encouraged me at the beginning. And, um, yeah, we, we virtually went round the world together, first of all, when I was working for ITV, and he was with the Beeb, and uh, then as I moved to Sky, um, the same thing applied, really. So a friend, but a rival, I suppose, in a way as well, um, but full of admiration for him, and, as I say, very sad. Um, um, my, my deepest sympathies to Annie and Freddie and, and the rest of the family um, at such a, at such a sudden loss. Yeah. Uh, you, you mentioned working with him. There was you and, and, and Brian Moore, wasn't there, at, at ITV, John Motson. Um, really the voice uh, of the BBC, wasn't it? That longevity that you spoke about there, what, what, was, what made him so good for so long? I think his, um, his love of uh, football, love of football people, um, he wasn't a great player. We played in the commentators team for, uh, oh, I don't know, best part of 15 years together, really. We went, went on a few tours, but he was an enthusiastic player. He was a, um, a reasonable athlete. He did a lot of um, half marathons and things like that, so he, he, he was fit. Um, but what I think also helped him, although he might not have thought of it at the time, was the rivalry with Barry Davis. I think the BBC did very well to sort of push the two of them, um, each encouraging each other a bit like Ronaldo and Messi, really, um, you know, to try and strive to those high levels. And the Beeb were blessed to have that, um, have, have two such uh, great voices. Um, and he, he, you know, he set standards that so many of us have tried to follow. And, and you know, I'm obviously not of a dissimilar age. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I can look back on it. And, and it is it is very sad to somebody who's who's been at the real top of a profession that, that I've strived to be part of um, that we've lost today. And on the back of losing Dickie Davis uh, recently as well, um, broadcasting's taken a, a double hit, really, in, in the last few days. You, you mentioned his preparation for, for games. You love your, your preparation for games as well. I know that very much. But uh, Motti, Motti loved a stat, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, I've always felt that um, that's part of the game, really. And John probably set the standards for that. He was probably the first commentator, really, in, in the television world to, um, to look at that kind of detail. And, of course, in, in the early days, there was no internet there was no way of really checking up things without doing it yourself so you'd be looking through um, back copies of the football yearbooks and and checking every conceivable source talking to the clubs themselves um, and and it's how to apply them i think that, that and that john was very good at that um, a stat for stat's sake is, is probably not a good thing. A stat that's relevant to what's happening on the field um, is the key, and I think I think John was uh, he was a master of that. Yeah, it, it, 
If we close our eyes, we're, we're immediately transported, uh, aren't we? Um, back to Edgar Street, February oh, yeah. 1972, and, and Ronnie Radford and all that, and Motti stood out on the pitch there. That was his, 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 his really his, his first big break, wasn't it? I think so. Um, any commentator will tell you, Rob, that you've got to be there for the moments. Um, I, I had to wait a long time for Sergio Aguero to... Um, uh, give me a little bit of the limelight in, in 2012, um, but, but John was um, well ahead of that. And that was a special day and um, uh, a wonderful goal. And, of course, we've, we've lost Ronnie as well recently too. So time marches on, um, and I, I think the legacy that John has left, the sound bites, the, um, the voice associated with so many... So many great occasions, so many great goals. Um, I, I love the, um, uh, the culture club, the, um, the reference at the end when Wimbledon won the, the crazy gang of beating the culture club, you know, that when, when Wimbledon beat uh, Liverpool in the 1988 FA Cup final. And I'm sure we could all think of, of many more. So um, it, was, um, it was a great career and, and a very good life. And I'm really sorry it's come to an end today. Yeah. And... and Sheepskin coats as well. <laughs> yes. I think that was to do with a game which was called off where he was doing a live, a live piece into Grandstand probably um, with snow on the pitch and um, the sheepskin coat very much to the fore. And um, as far as I know, he was quite happy to have that image. I don't know whether he got a regular supply of sheepskin coats from, from the manufacturers after that, but it, it was... Um, it, it is cold on the gantries, and um, you know he, um, he he perhaps emphasised that point. Uh, I, I've been very grateful. Sky have provided me with a lot of warm clothing over the last thirty years, so maybe I should thank Motti for that as well. Yeah, Martin, uh, thank you so much for for taking the time to uh, join us today on what must be a, a difficult day. Thanks, Rob. Yes, and um, as I say, deepest sympathies to all his family and friends.